welcome to Emily Kate Made This. I am Emily Kate and I am coming to you from Berlin in Germany. Welcome to my knitting slash sewing slash general crafty YouTube channel. This is going to be one of my project episodes, not the normal um, knitting podcast episode. I'm enjoying these immensely, so I think I will do a few more just project, single project episodes. Uh, let me know in the comments if you prefer that or if you just don't mind <laughs> as long as there's something fun, knitting, crafty related. So this episode, I have already finished said garment, but I completely forgot to film an intro. So hello, this is the intro and I will just add a couple of things before I add the rest of the footage. This is a 1940s vintage knitting pattern. It's free. Yay! I found it on Ravelry, so I will link it below for you. And it takes you to a website, a free knitting patterns, I think it's called. Everything is below. Um, I'm just casually falling over. I originally started this project uh, along with my friend using our knitting machines, but um, her machine was playing playing havoc so we went completely off <laughs> each other's timelines but um, I have finished mine but you will see what I mean later when I say I may not have completely finished mine and let us get on to the video hi so I've just been editing my video and several things have come to my attention first of all I never ever mention like the super important thing about fit and measurement and my calculations and how I even came about creating what I'm creating. The other thing is that all of my voiceovers I seem to have some strange like Irish twang to everything I'm saying so if you um, notice that my voice seems super weird in my voiceovers then that is I have no explanation for this, I don't know. Uh, so let me explain. I got this pattern and it's for a 35 inch bust and um, it's quite a loose fit. If you look at the photos on the Ravelry page or even just the model herself, it's very high, the lace comes up and rolls up very high and I didn't really want that and there's a lot of fabric, like it does hang off her shoulders and there's a lot of fabric in the shoulders and if you look at people's patterns who have followed it they do have a lot of fabric in there, like the upper part. So I already knew I had to take out at least two if not more inches in the fabric in my stitch count and adjust it to my measurements so I already knew I wanted to do that but I I wasn't aware that it was quite so big in the shoulders until later. Um, so what I did was I did a gauge swatch and I'm the pattern is 8 stitches, I think 12 rows but I can't remember, at least 8 stitches in um, 2.5 centimeters, 1 inch and so I got gauge and I just used my bust and waist and everything that I needed to adjust to what size I needed it to be. So that is what I did and um, you'll see that that didn't necessarily work in my favour favor at the end. But you'll get to that later. Okay, tension 6 and tension 4. I think that's a bit stiff. That one I think should be better. So here I'm starting with the sleeve. I'm doing a mock rib because I cannot for the life of me get this ribber to work. So it's a mock rib. It gives a general appearance of a, mo uh, of a mock of a rib, but it isn't. So even swatches can lie. This was on four millimeter and this was on six, not millimeter. Tension 4, tension 6, and it's 8 stitches by 11. Then I have cast it on 
and that is definitely not the same. I measured it, it's six and a half. <sighs> so I'm gonna rip it all out, because I thought that does not look like 10 inches. <laughs> it's not. Oh, that was dumb. If anything, it's too small. <laughs> yes, it looks super weird because I've got my um, extra thing cast on. It's actually perfectly fine and I just took it off the machine and didn't rescue any stitches. <laughs> now I've taken it off the machine and it's not stretched. It's actually the same as it was on the gauge swatch. So I just took it off the machine thinking it would be too big but it's actually almost too small. But I tried picking up all the stitches but I've dropped some. I've got to save them and then put them all back on the machine. <laughs> And they're back, safe and sound. This is really hard to show, <laughs> but progress. Okay, I have done five rows. I've got one more, one more row to go for one repeat, and then another two rounds of six rows. You following me? So this is how it's looking. And we have a completed lace panel. Hello. So it's very difficult to show you, especially with one hand, but this is where we are. Um, <laughs> I have pretended that it's seamed, so it's sitting in my armpit basically, and it will go across. I think it's too high, but I'm going to do some decreases to smoosh it in a bit so it gets a bit more of a poof, and then it will seam on. I don't, it always looks weird before seaming, but I think, I think, think, think. It's okay. I think. <laughs> oh my gosh, trying to get the river to work was a nightmare, so that ended quickly. And of course, I started with the body, doing the front and the back separately, and I did again my mock rib and worked my way up. I also learned here how to do the decreases for my sleeves on my machine. That was fun, I haven't tried that before. So new things were learnt. As you may be able to tell, this is a voiceover. It's the first time I have tried one. My software didn't allow it before, so I am giving it a whirl. I really hope it works. I've noticed the quality of the recordings not great, but let's hope that it works well enough that you can hear me and understand what I am saying. Are you dry? Yes, I think so. Let us get to seeming. I always think these videos are going to be really comprehensive and make sense, and then I record them, edit them, realize I missed out a bunch of information, and then I upload them, and then people have, quite rightly, a lot of questions because I just didn't address it at any point. So I am certain that will be the case again, maybe after a lot more practice I will get better at giving you the information that you need but essentially I just adjusted the pattern to fit my measurements. So for my pattern I came across a bit of a, a hurdle shall we say. I am knitting this on my machine obviously as you have seen and it does have ribbing and my machine you need to have a special river attachment to add ribbing. I have said attachment, but for the life of me, I cannot get it to work. I've watched many YouTubes, I've asked in Facebook groups, it's just impossible for to get anywhere. <laughs> I, I don't understand why I can't do it, why it's not working. There just nobody seems to have the issues that I'm having with it and the machine, like the ribbon attachment was 
adjusted to fit this machine from the previous owner. I know that it was bought in 1960 something, 67, 62, can't quite remember. Uh, they work together. I know that they do. I just don't know how to do it. So I have to do mock rib. So essentially you have a bunch of needles on the knitting machine and you put every other needle out of order and knit. Like instead of 40 stitches, for example, you have 20 stitches. And then after you have done double the amount of ribs. So if the pattern says four inches, I need to do eight inches of rib. I then fold it and then pick up the stitches and continue off of the body. I suppose it's a bit like a mop, um, like a rolled neckline or rolled hem or something. So it requires a lot more yarn and usually on like a normal modern pattern the rib isn't that long but vintage knitting patterns you have as I said four inches for the body, two or four inches for the sleeves so it's a lot more yarn. So I discovered I would not have had enough yarn for the purple yarn for the project. So I found some pure silk from Knitting for Olive. Um, I was given this in a trade with a friend, a knitting friend, and I just didn't know what to do with it. I wanted a nice lace project and I wanted a summer project. So I think it's been it could be two years, but I'd like to think it was just one year, but it might be two, that this has been in my stash. And I thought I have, it's 500 meters in 100 grams, and I had, <laughs> I'll write it here, I can't remember, five, uh, five balls, I think, and they're 50 gram balls. So I thought I'd be golden, and that would be fine. As I was making progress, I realized that that disappeared quickly. <laughs> the yarn went very fast. I, I completely misjudged the sleeves. I, it's very difficult for me to, un, to, to, <sighs> let's start this again. As I have progressed on the knitting machine, I have learned not to measure on the machine. If you measure the, stitches and the lengths and everything on the machine, it isn't an accurate representation because it's stretched out on the machine. So I was trying to measure the sleeve length on the machine with like a measuring tape and going, okay, that's like two inches, that's this much longer. I should not have done that. I should have used my gauge and known if I want two inches and I'm getting 12, stitches in an inch, I need 24 inch, 24 stitches. That's what I should have done. But I did not know that until I had discovered the mistake on the sleeve. So I basically, instead of making short sleeves, I made misc length. It ended on my elbow. Nobody wants it to end on their elbow. It didn't end below it or above. It was on the elbow, so every time you move your elbow, it would push the fabric up. And if I pulled it down, it would pull it down at the armpit, and it was driving me crazy. But because it was knitted bottom up, and I had done this mock rib, I don't know how to do a mock rib the other way around. I only know how to do it from the bottom of the item, do it, and then knit the rest of the item and then do the top. So I had done a day, two days of work on the lace for the shoulder and all the sleeve. And then I discovered this is the wrong length. It's fine, it's fine, it's going to be fine. Not fine, not fine at all. Didn't love that. So I've definitely learned lots of lessons during this adventure. The sleeve being a major one. <laughs> also discovered to really listen to my intuition. The sleeves were huge. And I took out a very large quantity of fabric from my sleeves. I did not want it to be as big as in the pattern, but I didn't take out enough. So as you will see in the upcoming clip, or perhaps I'll add the clip here, I'm not sure. I had to, 
like squish in and make the poofy shoulder with an excessively large amount of stitches and on my small frame it does not work on with drapey yarn it does not work with heavy silk because weirdly it's quite heavy um, and my husband's coming home <laughs> it's quite heavy so that was an absolute and utter fail which you will now see in the clip I am looking at it on my screen now this is what made me realize that I haven't given you any vital information I just talk like you've been here in the room with me watching and talking to me and you haven't <laughs> so I will catch up with you a bit later when I have got further on in the video Seeming is just not my forte. This seeming took me the entire day. The entire day. I discovered a major problem. Uh, this is too big. The whole thing is too big, even though it's to my measurements and I think because the lace, I did my measurements based on stockinette and I think it's the lace that is the problem, the problem child, and um, it's too big. It hangs off the side and look at this monstrosity. It, look, look at all of that fabric, that's just, that is just ridiculous, it is just ridiculous. It looks really saggy. Excuse the terrible lighting, but I am so sad that I have to undo the seaming. Not only because I just spent all day seaming, but it looks so good in comparison to all the other seaming on this jumper, like the body. This just looks so good, <laughs> but there's way too much fabric in these sleeves. Just so much fabric up the top and then because it's had to grow to be so much fabric here this is too big and it's just a really weird length and I decided <sighs> let's make it good old-fashioned 1950s jumper instead <laughs> and so you have seen the drama that unfolded so, what I can tell you is, it was not entirely my fault. It was kind of my fault, but let me explain. So, I was using my gauge swatch, and it was relatively big, but not massive. And seeing as I never do gauge, sw gauge swatches, I did one because I could do it on my machine and it wouldn't take as long and I, I washed it and I laid it flat to dry and everything but the difference in this fabric when it has weight to it like a garment heaviness versus a square that's what makes the difference so although it said it was eight stitches in one inch or 2.5 centimeters and I really should have checked, but I think 12 rows. When you measure this with my handy dandy little tool that I have that shows you the, the inch and you can place it anywhere all over the garment, it's not me that is changing my gauge. Sometimes when I'm knitting by hand, I think, oh well, it's changed because I was a bit more stressed or just my gauge changed during the knitting process. But if I measure this in various places around my machine, sometimes it's seven stitches and 10 rows. Sometimes it's seven and a half, sometimes it's eight. And that one stitch difference here and there made this so much bigger than planned. So with my calculations I was supposed to have a 33 inch bust based off of the eight stitches in an inch and how many 
stitches I would have at the bust as the widest part. Well, that turned out to be, if you include the seven stitches every which way here and there, based on the drape of the fabric and the heaviness and the stretch and the general movement of this silk, that made the garment 37 inches across. Is that right? So I have my notes here. They're an absolute mess. I really need to write these out neatly. I wanted to have a 33 inch finished bust. So with eight stitches, I needed the bust for flat, 132 stitches before I bound off for the sleeves. So 132 on the front piece. And that would have given me 33 inches if it had been eight stitches continuously with no alteration. But thank you to silk and silk's completely different behavior than wool in comparison to wool. Uh, I had 36 inches as the finished result, the finished measurement. So I took out about I'm going to just randomly say 20 stitches, like a significant amount of stitches I took out from the pattern, the original pattern. And if I had just followed this, um, it would have been like 40 odd inches across my bust, like a hundred and something centimeters instead of 80, whatever, I should write it down. Isn't that mad? So if you knit with this, uh, silk, pure silk from Knitting for Olive, it drapes and it's very flowy and changes your gauge a lot. <laughs> so now you know. I, um, I was originally a bit like disappointed because I thought I've done all this, all these measurements and it didn't work and that makes no sense. Now I understand, now that I have finished the garment itself, measured it, washed, measured it, there are multiple areas where it was eight stitches and multiple areas where it is seven. Also, it doesn't exactly bias, but it doesn't sit 100% straight, like sometimes. The fabric shifts and moves, so it's not the best for a structured, fitted, vintage garment from the 1940s. <laughs> but if you fast forward a decade, it is perfect. perfect 1950s tea. And y'all know I love teas. I am on a tea kick. I love these teas. So I'm not completely sad about it, but it does mean I now have to re-knit the whole thing. <laughs> I will change the sleeves for my second version. I will definitely not be using silk. I won't be using this kind of yellow autumn colour, I'll probably use a lilac or a purple, I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe just cream. I'm undecided on the colour. But I definitely 
want to make it again because I want the jumper version. Long sleeves or short sleeves, I'm not sure. I might go for long sleeves if I can and then I could wear it in the winter, autumn winter. And I will have to change the sleeves. I'm thinking quite a significant change. I'm thinking maybe a box pleat sleeve because I just do not love the way that the, this sleeve particular, this sleeve in particular is, is shaped and I don't like how much fabric is there. So I don't really see the point in following that pattern for that section. So I will be playing around with that and then hopefully I will get the next version of this in the near future because I have wanted to make this jumper for ages and I kind of almost have but kind of almost haven't. The lace does take quite a while for me. I needed about a week and a half to hand knit the lace sections. So there's lace on the front, lace on the back and there would be lace on two sleeves but I only managed to knit one sleeve. I left the second sleeve, thank goodness, because I wasn't sure if I would have enough yarn in total. So I thought if I do run out of yarn, I could just do the lace sections in the different dye lot and it might not look as obvious. But in one way, thank goodness, I didn't have to do the sleeve and I didn't run out of yarn. But now I have like two balls-ish of this wool, this silk, and I have no idea what to do with it. So I was considering making just a really long, like a scarf uh, or a head tie, hair tie, I'm not too sure. So I think I have something like 110 grams left. So if you have any ideas for what I can use that for, please let me know in the comments because I want to get it completely out the stash and not just kind of sort of out of the stash. So hopefully I have inserted the video of the finished item. Hello. So this video has been such a chaotic video to put together. I, I didn't film an intro, I didn't film an outro, I completely forgot to talk about really important things. So I hope I managed over the last seven hours to put together a cohesive video. I'd love to say next time we will be better and not so chaotic, but who am I kidding? So hopefully you enjoy the video. I am really pleased with the finished tee. Admittedly, I did want it to be a jumper, but I am really happy with the final result. And it is a bit oversized in like the body, the waist, but I don't have anything that's of this shape particularly, nothing that long either, so I think it will go with actually quite a few things. So yay! Thank you very much for watching and if you liked the video then please press the like button and if you enjoy this kind of content then please subscribe, it means the world to me, it helps get my channel out to more people and that is always good more knitters, more vintage fans, fans, <laughs> potential knitting friends. So yes, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!